Please be seated. The court is now in session. Court officer, please invite to TC uh, 889 eight, and the uh, counsel for witness to uh, the courtroom. Good afternoon, Mr. Witness. Uh, what is your name? Mr. President, my name is Lord Sui. Je m'appelle Lord Sui, Mr. President. When were you born? Quelle est votre date de naissance? Response. I was born, I, I do not recall it, I, I am now 55 years old. What is your occupation? President, could you repeat your answer? Response, I am a rice farmer. Question, what are your parents' names? Response, my va lonop lonok is my father and Nokkun is my mother. Nok and my mother is called Nokkun. What is your wife's name Question. and how many Comment children have you got? My name is uh, Dom Rin uh, and I have got six children. President, thank you Mr. Lasso. Based on the uh, report of the greffier uh, this morning in accordance uh, to the knowledge of the chamber, you are not uh, related to by blood or by law with the co-accused Kilimpon or any individual admitted as a civil party in case 002. Is that correct? Response, uh, that is correct. I have never known uh, any of them. Je ne les connais pas. The President, thank you. Le President, je vous remercie. And you have already taken an oath uh, before the uh, spirit of Iron Clay Club. Uh, is that correct? Before you uh, came to testify before the chamber today? Avant de venir dans le Response. 
Yes, I have already taken an oath before the Iron Club statue. President, thank you. Next, uh, I advise you of your rights and obligation. Uh, in your capacity as the witness before the chamber, your right. Mr. Lossui, in your capacity as the uh, witness uh, before this chamber, you may refuse uh, to respond to the questions or any requests for uh, your statement or statements which may incriminate you. The right against self-incrimination on your duty. In your capacity as the witness, you shall respond to all questions put to you by the parties or the member of the bench, unless uh, certain questions or any comment uh, which may uh, incriminate you, as I advised you earlier. In your capacity as the witness, you have to answer and tell the truth what you have heard, what you have known of, or you can recollect, or you have experience, or you have observed uh, directly of the event uh, that relates uh, to the question put to you by the witnesses and judges. Do you understand this, Mr. Lossui? Response, yes. Mr. Witness, have you given any testimony or interview with any investigator of the Office of Investigating Judges? If you have, how many times have you given such interview and where uh, did they take place? Response. I have uh, given the interview uh, to them twice. Question, uh, where did they take place? Question. Response, one in uh, Nepri uh, commune, the second one uh, was here in the court. The President, thank you. Question. Before appearing before the chamber today, have you reviewed or examined the uh, record of interview uh, you provided uh, to the investigators of the Office of uh, Co-Investigating Judge in order to refresh your memory? Response. Yes, I have a review. I have read... Uh, the record of that those interviews. Lu le de ces Question and to the best of your knowledge, Question. can you confirm uh, that the record of interviews which you Et have read to refresh your memory uh, corroborate with your statements uh, that you provided to the investigators of the investigating judges? Respond, yes, of course, uh, they corroborated oui, with my answer. President, thank you. So in, uh, in uh, examining this witness uh, in accordance with Rule 91 bis, uh, the chamber would give the floor uh, to the prosecutor and the lead co-lawyers for the civil party before other uh, parties. And please be advised that uh, the co-prosecutor and the lead co-lawyer for the civil parties will have three sessions to put the question to this uh, witness. Mr. Prosecutor, you may uh, now proceed with your questions. Thank you, Mr. President, your honors, counsel, um, Mr. Witness. 
Um, I'll be asking you questions Monsieur this afternoon. I represent the uh, co-prosecutor's office. And I want to start with a few questions uh, about your background and your position during the uh, democratic Campuchia regime. Uh, you've described in your interviews uh, how you became a Khmer Rouge soldier when you were about 15 years old. Uh, can you start, please, by telling the court about how it was that you ended up joining or being assigned to the Khmer Rouge military? When I was uh, 15 years old, uh, they recruited me. Uh, they, I was uh, inscripted. They said it was an absolute uh, requirement uh, that I had to uh, join uh, the uh, Armies. At that time, they said that it was an absolute requirement, then I raised my hand. Uh, I did not even understand what uh, army was all about. And then they took me to, into the jungle. And uh, in, I still recall at that time, I was always crying uh, in the uh, jungle. I missed my uh, parents and my relatives. You, you mentioned the word um, absolutes, uh, and I just want to clarify. Um, when they said, um, when they you were recruited to the Khmer Rouge Army, um, did they tell people they were looking for absolutes? And did you have any understanding as to what was meant when they asked for absolutes? Pourquoi ils recherchaient des absolus? They did not explain Réponse. what absolute uh, meant. Uh, among many people, we were uh, building the dam and the dike, and then they selected uh, the absolute uh, people. At that time, uh, we uh, were struggling in life. Uh, it was a very tough uh, condition, so we did not understand what it was about, and then we simply uh, raised our hand, and those who raised our uh, our hand were gathered and put in one group, and I did not uh, understand at that time uh, what they would uh, take us for. And when you were first assigned to the Khmer Rouge military, uh, do you know, were you part of a, a zone unit, military unit, part of the sector military, or part of the district military? They uh, took me out, and I was uh, part of uh, the sector uh, army uh, of sector 513. You mentioned 513. Was that your Question. battalion number? Vous dites 513. Était-ce le numéro de votre bataillon? Uh, it was uh, one uh, regiment, but I actually belong to the uh, battalion. Mais moi, j'intégrais le bataillon. And did there come a time where your battalion was broken up and uh, some of the units, including yours, were assigned uh, to the district? et ensuite affecté au district. Bon. Réponse. Yes, then they recruited the oui. uh, absolute 
uh, 17 uh, APRO people and they admitted them uh, to the district uh, military. They actually at that time divided into two districts, the other one uh, Sprig Prius uh, district. And when your uh, former battalion was divided up, um, which district military were you assigned to at the time? I was assigned to uh, Phnom Srok uh, military, district military. Do you remember approximately when it was that the battalion was divided up and you were assigned to the Phnom Srok district military? They divided uh, it in mid-1975. They divided up the uh, 17 uh, APRO people, and they were assigned to various uh, districts. And how many people uh, were in your unit, uh, your new unit, uh, to which you were assigned in the Phnom Srok District Military? au sein de l'armée du district de Phnom Srok. There were 90 Réponse. members uh, who were attached uh, to Phnom Srok district Phnom military. Srok. And who was Question. the commander of the 90, uh, 90 members uh, of the Phnom Srok district military. L'unité. Plutôt. Qui était le commandant des 90 personnes rattachées à l'armée du district de Phnom Srok? Réponse. The commander was a man by the le name of Tachum. Uh, he Ta is the uh, commander of the uh, company. Il commandait la compagnie. Uh, Mr. Witness, uh, in your interviews, you identified, uh, also identified a person named Tanak. Uh, what was Tanak's, Tanak's position, and what was Chun's position in the Phnom Srok district military? Tana is the deputy Réponse. commander uh, of the company. So your current election, if I understand, is that Chun was the commander and Nak was the deputy. Uh, do I understand correctly? Yes. I want to uh, ask you now a few questions uh, about some events uh, in your area uh, that took place after the Khmer Rouge assumed power uh, on the 17th of April 1975. And I'd like, uh, if you could tell the court, please, uh, after the Khmer Rouge took control in your area, uh, what happened to the people who were identified as former officials or soldiers of the Law Nol regime?
on the 17th of uh, April 1975, they came to all the village and commune, and then they screened uh, those who uh, had relatives who were the former uh, London soldiers. Uh, they would take them away and uh, executed them. I was uh, very uh, worried myself because I was one of the uh, from the intellectuals family, so uh, I was afraid that I would be implicated and eventually would be killed at the time. What do you mean when you say that you were from uh, an intellectuals family? Um, what was the history of your family? Because at that time, they would kill anybody who were educated. And who, who was it in your family that would have been considered a part of the intellectual group? My relatives in the village, uh, they at that time studied to grade one or grade two. They would not call themselves intellectuals, but they had some education. Who was it that went around screening families looking for uh, law and law people? s'occuper de ce processus de sélection et qui, qui recherchait des membres de la famille d'anciens responsables du régime de London. Uh, it was the uh, village chief, but village chief chef of the village. liberated uh, villages du, of the Khmer Rouge. Village de zone libérée des, par les Khmer Rouges. And what Question. village and commune were you living in at the time? Et quelle commune viviez-vous à l'époque? At that time, Réponse. I was living in my uh, hometown in Chung Wat village, Prenet Prea uh, commune, Prenet Prea district. Prea Prea et district de Prea Net Prea. Do you know uh, where the, the people who were identified as having connections to the law no regime, uh, do you know where those people were taken? I only heard from other others that uh, they would uh, be killed. Uh, they arrested them and took them away, and then they disappeared. Did you know any people in your village or commune um, who were so law and soldiers or who had positions in the law and regime who were taken away? In my village, uh, they arrested uh, the uh, former uh, village uh, chief uh, by the name of Nirim, and uh, his wife was also arrested together with him, and they both were executed. At that time, I was very young. I uh, minded the uh, cattles uh, at that time. Now, in your... Um, interviews, uh, you describe how after you became a member of uh, the uh, military, uh, you were assigned to work as a guard at a place, uh, Chamkar Knoll, uh, a jackfruit plantation in Spy Sisipon, uh, where you were asked to guard a road. Um, can you tell us uh, what were your or you remember uh, the orders or instructions that you received when you were assigned 
que vous nous uh, parlez des ordres que vous avez uh, reçus lorsque Knoll. vous avez euh, envoyé à monter la garde à Chamkar Knoll. The president, uh, the president. Council, uh, you have the floor. You may proceed. Council Kungsamon. Thank you, Mr. Mr. President. I have one small observation and Mr. I President. also have an objection Mr. at Mr. this Mr. juncture uh, concerning the Mr. line of questionings that the uh, Deputy in International Deputy Mr. Prosecutor Mr. is pursuing Mr. now uh, concerning uh, the time when he uh, worked as the uh, soldiers and the execution of the uh, former Lonol soldiers. Second is the uncertainty of the facts uh, which the uh, witness is testifying. Uh, what is said was that uh, that was before the 17th of April 1975. So it, it, there might be uh, confusion here as to the time frame of what uh, he is asking. Secondly, uh, it on the, uh, the facts uh, that is being uh, ascertained uh, now is uh, not within the scope of the uh, current case uh, that the uh, chamber is uh, hearing. Uh, I think uh, that it is not uh, the point that we should try to ascertain concerning the killing of the Lonel uh, soldiers in other places. Uh, the execution of this Lonel soldier may be uh, within the context of uh, Tramco or the execution side uh, at uh, Tramco. Uh, for that reason, I would like to object uh, to this uh, line of questioning pursuing by the prosecutor now. Thank you. Let me respond, if I may, Mr. President, briefly. Um, uh, first, uh, there's no question you know, that we're talking about a period after 17 April 1975. Uh, the witness has a detailed statement in which it is clear uh, that he was recruited to the military after. Uh, and second, there is a segment of this trial uh, that relates to the purge, the targeting of former law and old people. This is an issue disputed by the defense. Uh, and uh, throughout this trial, we have and will continue to uh, put forward evidence uh, from showing that this was a uh, system, systematic policy that was implemented across the regime. Um, so this is a district soldier. Uh, he has specific evidence relating to the targeting of law and personnel, and that is highly relevant to this trial. Mr. President. The President, uh, Council Coupe, you may proceed. If I may briefly uh, respond to the latter part of uh, the submission of the prosecution, um, or the answer of the, of the prosecution, um, as I understand your decision, um, determining the segments and the scope of the second trial. Uh, the treatment of Lonol official, officials and soldiers is limited to three specific um, sites. Tramcourt District, Tapping Tama Dam, and S21. Uh, this particular security site that the um, prosecution is now referring to does not uh, form part of uh, your decision. Uh, your decision is uh, the treatment of law and officials is uh, limited to those three uh, security centers. That is specifically in your decision. I don't have it right in front of me now, but I think that is how you phrased it. Si ma mémoire est bonne, c'est comme ça que vous l'avez défini. Mr. President, uh, the, the policy is an issue. The defense dispute that this was a policy of the regime and the prosecution's best evidence of that is the fact that simultaneously in every region of the country, law and people were rounded up and executed. This evidence has been elicited in every phase of the case not just those specific sites, and that, you know, the timing of this objection is, is, is rather strange. Then, then, if I may again briefly respond, then I would like to clarify. 
le président. The president, um, council, please uh, hold on. Uh, the bench will deliberate on this. The chamber uh, reject uh, the objection because the uh, purge at the Bank Mall uh, also is part of the widespread uh, purchase policy. Mr. Prosecutor, you may now proceed. Excuse me, I, I, I just found um, the document. Mr. Coppe, I just found the document. The President. Council, uh, the issue is rule upon. Maître, la Chambre so, Mr. Prosecutor, you may proceed. La parole est à l'accusation. Intervention inaudible de Maître Coppe. Just a very brief request for clarification, because I'm, I'm looking at B315, and it says here on the C, former Khmer Republic officials, implementation limited to Trump Corporation, 1st January down worksite, S21 Security Center, and Krang Tachang Security Center. Then maybe I'm misunderstanding the reading of E315, um, ERN page 01. Le RN 0102 4 peut-être ai-je mal compris donc ce qui est écrit dans ce document. Lumitui Coupé. Le président. Président. Maître Coupé. Le président poursuit. I noticed that the Net international political lawyer for civil parties on her feet. Are you raising a new matter or are you going to uh, speak about a matter which has just been ruled upon? cette question qui a déjà été tranchée par la Chambre. C'est effectivement en relation avec cette question pour indiquer à la Chambre et au parti quelle est notre interprétation. Nous partons du principe que l'existence de la politique doit être démontrée à l'échelle nationale, mais que la mise en œuvre de cette politique fait l'objet d'une section particulière dans l'annexe qui a été mentionnée par notre confrère. Et nous parlons donc de la mise en œuvre de la politique, mais l'existence de la politique doit être démontrée au niveau national. President, the co-prosecutor, you may resume your questioning. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Mr. Witness, um, I was asking you about the time you were assigned to work as a guard at Chamkar Kanol, and specifically, uh, I'd like to know if you were provided instructions by your superiors relating to Law Nol soldiers. The upper echelon instructed us to get along the main road, and there was no clear instructions as to what we had to do while we were guarding along the road. I heard about the attack now, interrupted by the National Defense Council. I'd like to 
objects to the question, President. Are you giving an observation or an objection, Council? It is an observation, Your Honor. I'd like the bench to direct the co-prosecutor to provide a clear timeline and the geographical location when he referred to Chamkak now, it is rather general. So it is better to give a precise location. And after that, I may decide whether I saw objects to question. President and Mr. Deputy Co Prosecutor, please provide the geographical location as requested by the Defense Council for Q Sampon. Uh, I'm happy to. It's it's in the interview. Uh, I will ask the witness, um, um, Mr. Witness, um, could you tell us the Champkar Canal site where you were assigned to guard? Uh, where was that located? When I was assigned to guard, I was not uh, given an, a specific instruction to guard at Jamka Canal, but uh, in fact to guard along the road. In the site that you have identified and discussed in your interviews, the Chamkar Canal site, where was it located? I heard people talking about Jemka Canal, but I myself did not know where Jemka Canal was. However, I myself was assigned to guard, to stand guard along the main road in town. And what, what town are you talking about? Where was it that you were guarding this road? It was along the uh, road to Jamka to Psa Thmai. It's along the road to Jamka Thmai. Jamka Ko, rather. Did you know of a execution site that was called Chamkar Kno? No, I did not, and I did not uh, see the location. I only heard the people being killed there, but I myself did not know uh, where it was or how uh, large it was. I only heard about it. I'd like to take you now to some questions. Um, relating to the period you worked at the Trapping Tama Dam. You describe in your interviews um, how, uh, as a soldier in the Phnom Srok District Military, you were assigned to work as a guard at Trapping Tama. Uh, can you tell us uh, how long you worked as a guard at the Trapping Tama Dam worksite? And do you remember the year or month where you were first when you were first assigned to that site? I was assigned to guard at the Trapantmo Dam in 1976. Uh, the main purpose uh, was to guard the dam in case it, uh, its part was uh, broken. If, th if that was the case, then we had to repair the dam wall. And how long did you work as a guard at Trapyang Tama? I uh, remained there for about a month. I wanted to clarify uh, from your interview uh, 
Um, did you work at Trapyang Tama two different times, two different periods, or were you only there uh, working as a guard once? I worked at the Trapyang Tama Dam for one time only. Were you there when the dam was completed, when construction of the dam was completed? When the dam was completed, I was there. And can you give us your best Question. recollection of when that was, what year, and what month uh, the construction of the Trapping Tama Dam was finished? À quel moment est-ce que la construction du barrage s'est achevée? The dam construction was concluded uh, probably in late 1976 or early 77. Okay, we may come back later to try and clarify some of these dates with you, Mr. Witness. Um, Let's talk about your assignment uh, as a soldier to guard at this site. Uh, how many soldiers uh, from the Phnom Srok District Military uh, were assigned to be guards at Trapping Tama Dam? I was assigned to stand guard at the Trapyang Tama Dam, and we, I was part of a 10-man group to go and guard there. How many other uh, units of guards uh, were you aware of uh, at the uh, Trapping Tama site in addition to your 10-man unit? Saviez-vous combien d'autres gardes il y avait sur le site de Trapéonctma? There was no other unit. If there were, they would remain at their assigned locations. But because our unit was close to the Trapéonctma dam, then we were assigned to go and guard there. On nous a demandé d'aller là-bas monter la garde. Who was the chief of your ten-man unit? Question, qui était le chef de votre unité de 10 hommes The uh, team chief was Pan. Réponse, le chef de l'équipe était Pan. And who did Pan report to Question, et à qui Pan rendait-il des comptes About Pan was a another man uh, by the name of Tanat. Il y avait Tanat au-dessus de Pan. And are you referring to the person that uh, you identified earlier as the deputy a commander of the Phnom Srok District Military? Is that who uh, you're referring to by Tanat? Yes, that is correct. You were part of the district, the Phnom Srok District Military. Uh, do you know whether or not there were any soldiers from the sector military uh, that were assigned and located at the Trapyang Tama Dam? There 
the sector army did not come to guard at the district levels. They stationed in Swai at their barrack. And they actually assigned their soldiers to guard along the border. And what part of the trapping Tama Nam was your 10-man uh, guard unit assigned to? était la partie à laquelle on avait affecté votre unité de 10 hommes. Our uh, unit was assigned to stand guard at the first bridge and uh, that extends to Pum, to Pumli uh, village where parts of the dam was uh, broken. Who, who was in charge uh, of the Trapping Tama Dam worksite? The person who was in charge of all the mobile units at the Trapping Tama Dam was Tawala. What was Taval's position? He was uh, in charge of the mobile units in Sector 5. Did Taval used to be part of the Sector 5 military uh, before he was assigned responsibility for the sector mobile units? His uh, former position was that he was Chief, or former chief of a military regiment, and later on he was reassigned to take control of the sector mobile unit on the dam construction project. Did you know Taval when he was uh, in the sector military and the chief of uh, one of its regiments? I began to know him well when I was part of the sector force. Bien le connaître lorsque j'ai fait partie de la force du secteur. Was there a period of time where you lived at the same place as Taval? Pendant laquelle vous avez habité au même endroit que Taval? He actually selected me to be a part of this absolute unit, and that's where I stayed, uh, near where he stayed. In your interview, you talk about living with him and being present, or you talk about his wedding in 1975. Uh, I wanted to clarify, were you uh, were you present at Taval's wedding in 1975? No, I did not attend to the, his uh, marriage uh, ceremony. I heard my colleagues telling me that uh, Taval went to get married to, to his wife in Spy, and later on he came together with his wife, and in fact, from what I heard, he, his marriage was uh, arranged. What can you tell us about uh, what kind of person Taval was uh, and uh, 
uh, where was he from? Uh, did you know his full name? Uh, can you tell us a little bit about Taval? I do not know his uh, full name, and I knew that he came from a Swai Kayot area. For those of us who aren't familiar with that area, can you tell us uh, what district or what province that is? I myself do not know from which area he came. However, he spoke with an accent. Chang Chang. Can you tell us approximately how old Taval was uh, during the Khmer Rouge regime when you knew him? At that time, Taval was uh, around 52 or 53 uh, years old. Did you see Taval uh, come to the Trapping Tama work site when you were working as a guard there? I saw him coming in the morning to the dam to oversee the work being done by mobile units or to inspect the workers working in the paddy fields. And how often did he come to the uh, Trap Yang Tama site? Did he come there every day or was it less frequent than that? He came to the Tapeyang Tmol Dam every two or three days, or sometimes uh, he came every day, so it uh, varied. Do you know where his office was, uh, where he was located, where he would come from when he came to the Trapping Tma Dam? I do not know where his uh, office was. Je ne sais pas où se son Sometimes he went to work at the another dam at the bank, and sometimes he came to uh, the dam. What can you tell us about what kind of person he was, uh, what kind of uh, leader he was as the person in charge? of overseeing the trapping to Maud Dam. Can you tell us anything about that? In terms of his uh, personality, uh, he led people to work and people had to complete the work that he assigned. Would, would you consider him to be a strict person? Tava was a, a very firm person. Tava was a person very firm. Were people at the work site 
afraid of Taval. Question. Les gens sur le site de travail avaient-ils peur de Taval? Amongst the workers in the mobile units, every time Taval came, everybody was afraid of him and they had to try to work harder. As someone who knew Taval from before, uh, when, he was at, when you were in the sector military, uh, did you have the occasion to talk to him uh, at all uh, when you were at the Trappian Tama Dam? que vous étiez sur le site du barrage de Trappé en Outma. I never had an opportunity to speak to him and I can say this I was afraid of him I even dare not to look at his face. De lui je n'osais même pas regarder son visage en le regarder en face. Thank you Mr. Witness. I want to turn now to uh, some questions about uh, arrests of workers at the Trapping Tama Dam site. Uh, can you tell us, uh, first of all, uh, who it was that was responsible for conducting arrests of workers at the site? The arrest uh, at the Trapiantmo Dam work site was site carried out by Taval's uh, subordinates. And could you be a little more specific? Who, who are you referring to uh, when you say Taval's subordinates? I couldn't grasp uh, who they were. What I heard was that uh, some members of the workers uh, committed some wrongdoings and then they disappeared. The unit chiefs made such a report to Taval and Taval uh, uh, subsequently made uh, the order for the arrest and the killing. Who did you hear this from? Question est de qui avez-vous entendu cela? Qui vous a dit cela? I heard this from members of the uh, workers Ce sont in the mobile unit under uh, his uh, supervision. He came to tell me that uh, for example, uh, that night Choi disappeared and he did not know who actually uh, made his arrest or where he was sent to. Getting back uh, to the people who were responsible for carrying out the arrests, you identified it as Taval's subordinates. Uh, are you talking about people who were uh, chiefs of uh, battalions, uh, uh, companies or platoons that were part of the Sector 5 mobile units, or are you talking about some other group? I couldn't grasp the situation back then. People disappeared from my, the mobile units, including those villagers from my village. And I was told, as in the previous example, Choi disappeared. And when I asked about his arrest, I was told that uh, it was made by his unit chief. So, I made a conclusion that uh, it was the chiefs of the big units or the units who made arrest of their unit members. This Choi person uh, that you've referred to, 
Uh, was he a member of a sector uh, mobile unit, uh, or was he part of a village or commune level unit? Choi was in the village mobile unit, then he was reassigned to work at the a sector mobile unit. He, his implication was that he had a, a connection with the former Lonol army, and that was the main reason for his arrest. How did you learn that the reason for his arrest uh, was that he had a connection to the Law Nol regime? Choi himself was a former soldier, and at that time he was about 20 years old. However, he uh, lied to them. He said that he was a boy who actually lived in the pagoda, and that he was an orphan. I want to make sure I understand correctly. You're saying that Choi uh, was actually a former Law Nol soldier, uh, but had lied and said that he was a boy who came from a pagoda. Do, do I understand you correctly? Yes. Initially, he also used début, to live in the pagoda, but later, do, later on, he volunteered tard, to be a soldier. So that's how the complication started. And I want to ask about one group, uh, one. Uh, a group of people, specifically uh, Mr. Witness, um, were there workers who tried to flee or escape the Trapiang Tamao worksite who were arrested? The mobile unit who were assigned to work at the Trapiang Tmao Dam work site, and if any member attempted to flee, he or she would be arrested and accused of trying to flee to Thailand. And who was it that uh, would arrest workers that tried to flee? Who were they arrested by? Et qui a procédé aux arrestations de ceux qui cherchaient à s'enfuir? It depends. Uh, it, it depends on where uh, they were fleeing. Uh, if they, for example, fled somewhere around the border line, then, then the uh, military at the border line would arrest them. If they were to traverse the border, it was the forces of the army responsible to mount the guard at the border who would arrest them. Um, Mr. President, Mr. President, with your leave, at this time I'd like to uh, provide to the witness uh, his two prior statements, uh, as I have some uh, questions from some clarifications that I want to direct him to regarding the subject. Uh, this is document um, E319-19.3.1. E319-19.3.2.0. Uh, that is his OCIJ interview and document E3 slash 9060, E3 slash 9060 is his DC CAM interview. Uh, with your leave, may I provide these to the witness? The President. Court officer, please. Uh, obtain the document from the prosecutor and hand it over to the witness who is reviewing. Mr. Witness, I'd like to ask you about 
uh, some specific information you provided uh, regarding arrests of workers uh, who tried to escape uh, in those two interviews. Uh, first, uh, if you could refer uh, to your DC CAM interview, document E3 uh, slash 9060, uh, ERN pages, Khmer 00733010, English 00728716, French 01123672. You were asked here, and I quote, question, what was it like when you first arrived at Trapping Tamar? Answer, when it comes to construction, it was not yet completed. There were many MAPE mobile unit members, many of whom ran back home. They were arrested by security police. The village security police formed combat lines, waiting only to arrest those fleeing and to return them to work. End of quote. Mr. Witness, um, the, what I'd like to ask you is, the village security forces that you referred to here, uh, what village were they, were they from? And whose command were those security forces under? They they were the um, village uh, mobile unit, and then they were arrested. Uh, they sent uh, to the uh, commune. So generally, uh, they, uh, they would uh, arrest them and take uh, them back. Even if uh, they were our parents, uh, we could not uh, help them. The militiamen uh, would uh, arrest them and take them back uh, to their base. That, that's what I wanted to clarify when you talked about village security forces. Were you referring to a local militia, um, people who are sometimes, were sometimes referred to as schlop? Yes, uh, they are they are called militia, oui. uh, village oui. militiamen or commune militiamen. Uh, Mr. Witness, were there also some occasions uh, where your unit uh, arrested people who were trying to escape? For my unit, uh, we never. President, uh, Council, uh, for Kusampon, you may proceed. Council Kusampon, thank you, Mr. President. I would like to ask uh, the prosecutor to uh, refer to any specific document, because if you do not point to any specific uh, ERN uh, numbers, uh, it gives rise to leading uh, the uh, witness. So we do not know where the, uh, which document the uh, prosecutor is referring to now. Mr. President, I asked an open question first. The witness has given me an answer. Now I'm going to refer him to uh, some answers he gave in both of these interviews, um, which I can proceed to do now, or if you want to take the break, if this is the time for the break, I will um, refer to these passages when we when we come back. The president, the time is now appropriate for uh, a short break. Uh, chamber shall adjourn now and resume at 3 p.m. Court officer, please uh, assist the uh, witness uh, during uh, the break and have him back to this courtroom.
et vous assurer qu'il soit de retour auprès de toi. Avant 15h. Donc, la cour est maintenant adjourée.